What's up guys, Scarlet Gamer here, and today I'm going to be doing the long-awaited video for, I'm assuming a lot of people, of the ranking of the Railway Series books by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey. So before I begin, I should mention that this will only be comprised of Wilbert Audrey's Railway Series books, only because I haven't read many of Chris's books, and the ones I have read are just okay, average, or boring, or just... I don't know. They're like either okay, average, or boring. So that's why I'm, I'll honestly be ranking only Wilbert's books in this video. And I might do a follow-up video if, whenever I get around to reading more of Chris's books. I might do a follow-up video where I rank Chris's books. But yeah, so without further ado, let us begin. In number 26, we have James the Red Engine. Now in my opinion, as James the Red Engine was the first book ever illustrated by C. Reginald Dalby, I personally don't really like the illustrations that much. Sometimes the engine's proportions are just so out of whack. It's definitely the ugliest of Wilbert's Railway Series books. But at the same time, it's not just that that I don't like about James the Red Engine. It's also because the stories are honestly kind of unoriginal. James the Red Engine is basically just Thomas the Tank Engine, but like, with James instead of Thomas. But at the same time, I'm just glad James does have a character arc. But that's honestly, but honestly, said arc is why I don't really like James in the Railway Series books. But I do personally, I personally prefer James in the TV series, whereas the Railway Series is just there, to be honest. And not really a major, a major player in the Railway Series, to be honest. In number 25, we have Mountain Engines. Now, Mountain Engines, in my opinion... Unlike what people like the Unlucky Tug say, I personally feel that it's just a very pointless volume in the Railway Series books. I mean, aside from aside from Bad Lookout, literally none of the stories really matter in this in this book. First story is a flashback about Coldy learning to, you know, like conquer his fears about climbing mountains and like Remembering that he has automatic brakes when he comes down the mountain for a trial run. Devil's Back is about some new engines arriving on the Coldy Fell Railway, and one of them, Lord Harry, derails or whatever. I can't even remember what happens in this story, to be honest. And the last story is with Lord Harry being renamed Patrick after doing something very brave, which I can't even remember, to be honest. Yeah, overall, this book is pretty pointless. Next. In number 24, we have The Three Railway Engines. This is definitely the most unrealistic book out of all of Wilbert, Wilbert Audrey's Railway Series books. And I very much... The re that's basically the reason why it's in number 24 spot on my list. It's just so unrealistic. I mean, come on. Breaking an engine up in a tunnel and basically blocking your main line. That's just so stupid. And overall, that's one of the main reasons I don't like this book. However, when you remember that the Railway Series started out as simple bedtime stories for Christopher that Wilbert wrote because Christopher was sick with measles and Wilbert just wrote them to entertain him at first until his wife Margaret decided, decided to suggest to Wilbert to publish them, yeah, you kind of you learn to accept this book just a little more and to love it just a little more just because of that. And I gotta be honest, I do actually kind of like Henry's Redemption arc. Um, yeah, in the, in this, in this, um, in this book. And I do kind of like the morals of this, of this book, to be honest. Especially the moral of the sad story of Henry and Edward Gordon and Henry. So now we'll move on to number 23. In number 23, we have Percy the Small Engine. Now, the main reasons why I don't like this book are not only because of the illustrations, but also... Because of Harold, yes, like many other characters in the Railway Series books of Wilbert Audrey's tenure of writing them, Harold did not receive any other stories by Wilbert Audrey after the story Percy and Harold, or Percy proves a point in the TV series adaptation in the US dub. A lot of people are definitely going to want to kill me for this, but number 22 is Four Little Engines. Now the reason why Four Little Engines is in number 22 well, it's a, there are a few reasons, but I'll just go over, a f uh, well, like, two of them, okay? 
Number two is honestly because, well, I, like, some of the illustrations are fine, but others aren't so good. Mainly due to the fact that the narrow gauge engines are all supposed to be red in the Railway series, but C. Reginald Dalby gave them a pink look, which I don't really like, and number, and the reason number one is honestly because this book came at a really weird, at a really weird point in the series. Granted, I don't really feel that it was Wilbert Audrey's fault entirely, but, like, think about it. We've learned so much about all the main standard gauge engines, except, I think, Percy. And, due to this, I just really feel that Percy's book should have been before this, not the other way around. But all the same, I do feel that this is a great introduction to the narrow gauge engines, and from here on out, every single book on this list is actually either okay or good. In number 21, we have Tank Engine Thomas again, as the first, in my opinion, actually good book on this list. Solely because of the fact that it's just a fun time on Thomas's branch line, meeting new characters, and having some fun and great stories. Especially Thomas Terrence in the Snow, and Thomas and Birdie. In the number 20 spot on this list, we have Edward the Blue Engine himself's book. Edward the Blue Engine. Now, in my opinion, although this book is honestly quite good, the story cows at the beginning feels rather pointless in a way, with, it, with its only significance being to set up that Edward is getting older and getting on in years. Though the other stories are pretty exciting, especially Old Iron. In number 19, we have Troublesome Engines. Now, in my opinion, Troublesome Engines is honestly a pretty good book. I do like the real-life inspiration for this book, as during the 1950s, there were strikes going on around BR, or British Railways, um, and if I'm being honest, I do like that, how Wilbert took, it, took actual real-life inspiration for this book, and he would go on to do much more, a lot more of that for the rest of his tenure of writing the Railway Series books. And this book also introduces Percy, the small engine, who I do honestly really love. I love Percy so much. He's such a great character. Even in the Railway series, he's such a great character. And even though I do kind of prefer him in the TV series, except the Hit era and the Ghislaine era, I do still feel that Percy is a great character in both the RWS and the TV series. In the number 18 spot on this list, we have... The Little Old Engine. Now, in my opinion, The Little Old Engine is honestly quite an interesting book. It's honestly pretty good, and I do like the- and we're introduced to Duncan in this book, who I do really like. Because, I mean, come on, it's Duncan for God's sakes. I mean, who couldn't love Duncan for Christ's sakes? However, one thing I don't really like when it comes to the TV series adaptations of the episodes, or at the very least for the episode Trucks, or Rusty Helps Peter Sam in the U.S. dub, but whatever. Anyways, is that, unlike, I mean, I do like the crash in, in, um, trucks in the TV series episode more than in the Railway series version, because unlike in the Railway series where it's literally just a still image or picture or whatever, um, we can actually see, we actually get to see the crash in the TV series episode because it's an episode of a TV show, and in a TV show, you can actually pull off stunts and crashes like this. And if I'm being honest, the, but if I'm being honest though, I have always never understood how the heck those trucks mistook Sir, sorry, mistook Peter Sam for Sir Handel. I almost said Sir Handel for Peter Sam, but whatever. And like, because like, they're not even the same color in the TV series for God's sakes. And to be honest, I do actually really enjoy, or like, I really like the nod to the Tally Clin railway that Scarlowy makes by mentioning that he has a twin called Tally Clin who is an engine in real life on the Tallyclin Railway. In number 17, we have Gallant Old Engine. Now, in my opinion, this book and The Little Old Engine were honestly meant to cover the same things, those being Scarlow and Renee's returns to the Scarlowy Railway. I do really enjoy the first story, Special Funnel, as it picks off, as it picks up right where, you know, trucks left off with uh, the story of Peter Sam having trouble with his funnel. And if I'm being honest, I really do enjoy the story Steamroller, 
It's really funny and honestly really amusing. Now, although the story Passengers and Polish is relatively simple, I do have to admit that it's honestly pretty good. Despite the fact that it's so simple, I still firmly believe that it's a relatively okay story. And I also just love the tension of Gallant Old Engine. I mean, seriously, like, if Reneas doesn't get that passenger train home, then the railway will close. And you ultimately just really, mu you really pray that Reneas will get to the station um, on time and, like, get the passengers home safely or whatever. And in my opinion, seeing him do that, do just that, is honestly really satisfying. In number 16, we have Tramway Engines. Now, in my opinion, the TV series adaptations of these, adaptations of these stories were honestly better, especially Ghost Train, or Percy's Ghostly Trick in the US dub of the TV series adaptation. Now, although I do like the original stories, Ghost Train, the original Ghost Train story was honestly nowhere near as spooky as the TV series episode adaptation. Now, as for Wooly Bear, well, in my opinion, Wooly Bear is a good story. But that's literally all I have to say about it. It's just a pretty funny story, and that's about it. And as for the other two stories, Mavis and Toby's Tightrope, well, in my opinion, they are pretty good. I do like Mavis, and that's about it. Although I only really like Mavis in the TV series, to be honest, because in the Railway series, she doesn't really do much, to be honest, aside from these two stories. In number 15, we have Branch Line Engines. Now, Branch Line Engines, in my opinion, is a pretty good book, in my opinion. It's pretty good, and all the stories are honestly quite fun. Though I do have to admit that I actually prefer, well, one of the stories, I prefer the TV, actually two of the stories, no. I prefer the TV series adaptations of Thomas Comes to Breakfast and Percy's Predicament, mainly because of the crash scenes. But even still, I still really like all the stories in this book. And I do also kind of like Daisy, or at the very least in the TV series. Not really in the Railway series, but I still like her in this book at least. In number 14, we have the book Stepney the Bluebell Engine. Now, I do not like the TV series adaptations of, the, of most of these episodes. In particular, Stepney's introduction story. I gotta be honest, I do not like Rusty to the Rescue. And Stepney's branch line being on Sodor, well, and being a branch line also, instead of an actual railway on the mainland, in Sussex, like in real life, well, in my opinion, that's just so wrong. But in my opinion, this book does those stories in the TV series so much justice, and they're honestly much better in the book. In number 13 on this list, we have the book Toby the Tram Engine. Now, in my opinion, Toby the Tram Engine is a really great world-building book. I mean, seriously, like, it, it expands, like, it takes us off the island of Soda for the very first time in the Railway series. And, I mean, come on, we're also introduced to Toby the Tram Engine himself, who is, in my opinion, a great character. Thomas in Trouble is an okay story, if I'm being honest, but, like, not anything great. And if I'm being honest, the story Dirty Objects is just so, honestly, really great. Though I do prefer, again, the TV series adaptation because the crash is actually, you can watch the crash, but in the book, you can only, like, read the text and understand what happens in the crash. And Mrs. Conley's Christmas, despite not being adapted for TV, is still, in my opinion, an okay story. It's a pretty good story, and it's honestly rather sweet. Number 12. The Eight Famous Engines. Now, in my opinion, all the stories in this book are honestly really great. With Gordon Goes Foreign, in my opinion, being one of the best of the of all four stories in this book. Though I do prefer how much more serious the crash in the TV series adaptation of The Fat Controller's Engines is, or Thomas and the Special Letter in the TV series adaptation. Just like this, he boasted. Number 11, The Twin Engines. Now, in my opinion, The Twin Engines is a 
Well, for me, it's a very mixed book. I do love the... I love three of the stories, and I dislike only one of them. Now, for those who don't know, The Missing Coach was originally going to be Donald and Douglas' introduction episode to the TV series, and it was their introduction episode for the Railway series. However, Britt Allcroft cancelled it towards the end of production, as it was apparently, according to her, too confusing for young children to understand the story. And if I'm being honest, I do kind of understand where Britt was coming from with this statement. I mean, I mean, seriously, like, what was Donald and Douglas' plan even supposed to be? Like, okay, so, like, they switch tenders and, like, what? Like, they don't have nameplates, so they don't, like, need to switch tenders because no one will know who's who. Because they still don't have nameplates yet. Of course the Top Hat found out about the- Of course the Top Hat found out about their plan. Because it was so brain-dead stupid. But if I'm being honest, all the other stories in this book are just really funny, in my opinion. I mean, like... Seriously, like, Breakman is just so funny and also kind of morbid, but also really still more funny than morbid. And the last story, The Deputation, is honestly quite emotional and kind of honestly very sweet. I mean, like, it shows that the engines aren't just colleagues that work together, but that they are, in fact, a family of engines who found family, well, on this island. And... That's just really sweet, if I'm being honest. 